I'm Justin Snyder. And I'm Stephanie Greenwood Snyder. We're just an average everyday couple. But over the years, we've seen the incredible importance of building community together. We'll be talking with friends and experts about their stories and experiences to help us learn and grow. We don't want to just survive through life. We want to intentionally thrive. This is The Intentional Thriver. Welcome back to another episode of The Intentional Thriver. Yeah. Um, we've officially run out of good guests, so <laughs> now it's first. time to talk to Aaron and Rose Inman. No, I'm totally kidding. We are so excited <laughs> to have Aaron and Rose Inman on today. How are you guys? Welcome. We're we're good. We're good. I mean, uh, we're alive. Um, we're... <laughs> Childless right We're now. We're childless right now, which is, yeah, Ooh. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's kind of nice. For those who don't know, she is with uh, their grandparents. Grand- her grandparents, so yeah. She's not just they- like running <laughs> feral <laughs> in the backyard. I mean, she might. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who, who knows? No. no. She, Sophie is a treasure. All right. Well, let's dive in. So right off the bat, uh, again, for those who know the show, um, we always start off by saying something we appreciate about our guests and two things. For the Inmans, number one, Aaron and Rose are some of the most creative uh, people I've met. And creative is a very funny word to me. I, I don't know about you, Aaron, working in a creative space, but it drives me a little bit crazy. And people are like, oh, just just be creative or just because like there's your process of working through and there's a lot of research and there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into it. Then you pair that with like being doers mm-hmm. a lot of times, specifically in filmmaking, as you guys know, Um there's a lot of people who like to talk and and that's generally where it ends. It's like, oh, it'd be great if we made a film or if we did this. Yeah. Like you guys just finished a feature, yeah. Um, yeah. which is amazing. Con- congratulations on that, by the way. So excited. And we're going to talk more about that uh, later. You are so genuinely nice, genuinely kind, genuinely so grateful for things. That's something that mm. I genuinely yeah. love about you guys is yeah. like, you see the beauty in everything. You see the the joy in so many things. Um, even talking through, you know, we're going to hear about your background, Rose, and some of it's really hard and you yeah. still see so much beauty out of it. So let's dive yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys talk a little bit about your backgrounds? For those who do not know, Aaron and Rose Inman, tell me about your background. So I grew up um, as a pastor's kid. Um, So, you know, I was, I had a very interesting life. Um, First person at church in the morning, last person to leave, that kind of stuff. Um, And um, I just kind of like got interested in filmmaking when I was like, I think it was in like 10th grade or something. I started making films for my, um, youth group and everybody seemed to love them. I would do the old, you know, somebody's falling reverse, falling back, you know, like this kind of thing. I thought it was really cool. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, it's, it's so interesting when you're that age because you're so influenced by everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I really didn't know who I was yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and filmmaking was a way for me to express myself because I, being a pastor's kid, I never really liked being in the limelight. I never liked being on, on, you know, in front of everybody. And that's kind of what you are as a pastor's kid, whether you like it or not. Um, And um, so, yeah, that kind of like took me on a journey of like discovery and finding what my voice is. And um, I ended up spending two years as a, as a missionary living on a, living at a church um, kind of discovering what my own faith was and not something that was borrowed, something Mm -hmm. that was like my parents' faith or like what, what they believed. And it kind of turned into what do I believe and what do I have to say? Um, And then I, um, you know, still stayed with filmmaking and, and I ended up in LA. Um, (laughs) When I was in LA, uh, it was very easy there. Everybody's so nice. (laughs) Super kind. <laughs> Give you a shirt really off their back. People, you know, um, yeah. No, I, yeah, I just kind of struggled for a while in LA, um, even though I was in the place that I wanted to be in around the people that I wanted to be around. I, I just felt 
like I wasn't achieving what I was supposed to achieve. What I, you know, I, I what it really was is I hadn't um, realized what my voice was yet. Mm. Um, and I'm, you know, I still struggle with that. I think everybody struggles with that as a, as an artist, you're, you're constantly trying to figure out your voice. You're almost like chasing after it all the time. Um, and, uh, so I started working for this company where I was, I was working for a reality TV company <laughs> and I will not tell you what they are. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I was working for a reality TV company just like as an editor and um, I really, really, really wanted to be a director um, like everybody does at one point uh, in their journey as a filmmaker. And um, I'm, you know, I, it was like a really hard, dark time in my life mm. because I hated it. I really, I still don't like editing. No. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I say that I, I, I enjoy the process that it creates, um, but it's probably my, my least favorite part of filmmaking just because you're sitting in a room all by yourself and it's not very collaborative. Yeah. You know, I was in a very dark time of my life. I really wanted to be something that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then I met this beautiful lady oh. right here. Um, Rose to the rescue. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. So basically, uh, I was working at this company, and then I ran into Rose um, in the kitchen of our production company. We had like three floors of this 10 story building. Yeah. And I met Rose in the kitchen, um, and we were getting some kind of snacks or whatever. And um, I had seen her around, um, thought she was beautiful, but definitely thought that I did not have a shot at all. Um, not, <laughs> it was nice, honestly. No, I wasn't that, even that, that makes sense. There's no way. And um, so I, so we, you know, she worked in a totally different department. Mm -hmm. And so I started, we started talking and then we exchanged numbers because there was a group of us that would go out yep. for lunch. I, I was friends with the other guys. Yes, the other oh, guys of my department. Guy. And you walk by, I have Boo. to cover because you're blowing <laughs> i i have a white boy too <laughs> no, I, I have a second job as a lighthouse light <laughs> <laughs> i have saved have many ships like smack on your head and then you yeah. glow no really but you, glowing com <laughs> glowing in the way of like compared to the dark industry that that you guys were working yeah. in yeah, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm genuineness, kindness, you mm -hmm. saw that right away, even mm -hmm. in a dark time for Aaron, that's cool. Yeah, so we so we exchanged numbers yeah. and um, I wrote her name down as Rose on the seventh floor because yes. that's the floor that she worked on. <laughs> yeah. And then she wrote down Aaron on the eighth floor because that's the floor that I worked <laughs> on. Um, and it stayed that way until long after we got married. We recently changed it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it stayed that way like last for, week for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Until <laughs> yeah. I met Justin. No, <laughs> just, <laughs> Justin on the first floor. Yeah, Justin. Justin in the basement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, uh, yeah, so we started hanging out mm -hmm. and um, realized that we were good for each other mm -hmm. and we kind of had the same beliefs and we had the same wow. dreams and we had we all we you know we had this vision of a future that like just connected yeah but and i realized it first she did and i kept oh. it a secret because i think aaron was too good to be true mm -hmm. and um i was going through a time where i didn't believe in relationships oh. but we had a such a special friendship that to me that was enough, that was um, solid, that was very beautiful. And so I didn't want to lose that wow. because if in that moment I felt that if we were to have to be more than just the great friends that we were, that if anything happened um, was to happen that I would lose a very important friend True. to me. Yeah. And so I kept my feelings from Aaron and then Aww. for a long time. Yeah. 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 So we were, we were friends for a year before we even started dating. Yeah. Um, just because the friendship was so good, you know, yeah. I think we were so good for each other. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then, uh, then we started dating and the rest is history. Yep. The rest is history. <laughs> done and yeah. done. 
Yeah. Pretty cool. Rose, how about for you? Like your your background? A little different. Yeah, you've, you've had a wild ride. <laughs> so um, before I tell you where I come from, I want to tell you why my name is Rose, because a lot of people ask me that question. Right. And uh, my Vietnamese name is Pu Hang. Um, but in 1998, when I was, um, I don't remember, how old, maybe 15, 16, um, I was hanging out with some international friends at the school that I was, um, that I was at. Um, I was studying on the Vietnamese side of the school, and then there's a UNIS, it's United Nation International School, students on the other side, but we share a playground. And so we were sitting there and talking, and they were like, you're a Vietnamese name. They were, they were about like 12 to 14 year old. So they're like, your Vietnamese name is very hard to pronounce. Mm -hmm. And they were like, and right before that, we were talking about a huge iconic movie that just came out in 1997, the Titanic. So they're like, we're going to call you Rose. (laughs) And so it's, (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's I did not know that. <laughs> so, so I am Rose after the Titanic Rose. <laughs> so, wow. so you've been named after James Cameron. Hey, not many people can claim that James Cameron was part of their naming process. So. I know. That's yeah. cool. Kudos. I was born and raised in Vietnam and I moved to uh, the United States of America in uh, 2008 when I was 25 years old. When I was about uh, six or seven, I, I'm the youngest of three children in the family. So I think now that I'm a parent, I understand a lot of things that my parents mm-hmm. did. Um, by the time you have three kids, <laughs> you are out of tricks, right? <laughs> You're all like, we wouldn't know. Make it, yeah. She's she'll make it. Whatever happens, she'll make it. So I think because they're so busy with the other two um, that I would just had a lot of free time. And I, and I also like was able to watch what my older brother and my older sister were doing. And the, at the time in Vietnam, they were kind of switching over from uh, Russian to English oh. um, because of the, the war um, that uh, you guys call the Vietnam War and we call the American War. And So my sister was, my parents decided to switch her from Russian to English. And I was watching everybody was learning this language and I couldn't understand. Everybody's writing it. Everybody was speaking it. And I was really mad. And so um, my dad, he was very advanced for the time. And he bought these two cassette tapes that was called English for Children. (laughs) And, and one cassette, and there were two cassette tapes, and one that had American accent, and one had British accent. So that was my toy for every single day for, you know, and, and you know the cassette tapes, anytime you, it runs out, you either use a pencil and you yeah. turn yeah. it to the other end, and then you listen to the other side. And that was my toys for years. Wow. And before I got to like, um, I don't know, like after a couple of years, I was able to speak with um, a mixture of American and <laughs> accent. Yeah. So do do a couple of words. So you're like super that classy. You <laughs> <laughs> That's how I you really got that. Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, just throw that in the rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I do wish, you know, I, I, I want like some like, you know, other dimension rose <laughs> to speak. In like the British accent. All right. <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. Hey babe, can you get me some water? <laughs> oh, there, there you go. Flawless. Yeah. Flawless. <laughs> so, Rose, what got you interested in filmmaking? Because you, uh, you guys work together within filmmaking. Like you are a very talented storyteller yourself. What What got you interested in that? I was already interested in going to work or like doing something more than wasting four years in in college Mm -hmm. and um at the time i was going to this coffee shop um downtown hanoi and i saw this ad and it was calling for an an assistant to work in a remote area in the north of vietnam uh, to help this german lady um to do her um 
her doctorate uh, thesis and it was in like the very like remote area that in on one mountain you have like two or three houses oh. so I was interested in doing that and and through that process I learned and her thesis was about um, risk management and uh, land use sustainable uh, land use hmm. um, and we would climb the mountains and go to these remote houses and the most poor families in the north of Vietnam. And I just witnessed like how people live without nothing hmm. and how, and we talk to them and we share stories with them and ask them how they deal with loss hmm. in crops, in um, animals, in, in people, in a, like a natural disaster, you know, you name it. And so these people that we've met are the happiest, most amazing people. And then I, I would go back to the big city and I was like, man, it's such a, like, it's so different. Yeah. And then, so I start to look forward to go back to the mountains and meet with the children. And then at the time I make so much money, I make $200 a month. Whoa. I did. And it was like comparing to these people who made like a dollar mm. or like seven dollars a month. Mm. I made so much money wow. at 20, you know. Wow. And so I started to buy like um, like school supplies or food or, or um, snacks. And each time we go there, I would give them out to the kids. Mm. And there was this one family that we met that she was about my age, uh, maybe a couple of years older. And she had two two children, a boy and a girl, and we went into her house and they, the houses are made of stilts, um, like made, made of bamboo slats, right? And you walk up in the house, you have to walk up the stairs and you can see through the floor wow. and the animals are usually live under the house. And um, in the corner of the house are three bricks that you put the pot on and that's the kitchen. Um, and I was just like asking her questions about, um, how, so how do you eat? Like, where do you find things to eat? Because, you know, they don't have fridge or they don't have anywhere to store anything hmm. pretty much. And she was like, oh, we usually find vegetables in the, in the jungle when we go farming or, and I was like, wait, but where do you get meat? Like, how do you find meat to eat? Because you have to walk so far. Imagine living on a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like the road that we have here. It's dirt road. So you have to walk to get to anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, well, we, we do sometimes find uh, pig fat and we can eat like that twice a month. Wow. And I was just like, it just opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I was so grateful because I was able to grasp the importance of life about what's really important and mm -hmm. the, the and the kids were just so grateful so happy mm -hmm. and um and i think in that moment i realized i love meeting people talking to people and and that's one of the reasons i love filmmaking because you get to tell stories and I love documentaries and that's one of the inspiration that I always love to work on documentary mm -hmm. and making films that tell people stories. You would meet someone for such a brief moment in your life mm -hmm. and without them knowing it, they just give you this like foundation about life. Of, of, that's why I'm so grateful about everything mm -hmm. because I always go back to that story and I just like, how can they be so happy with, yeah. with that? You know, right. like, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then living in LA, I remember we had met you right after you had, well, not right after, but pretty yeah. soon after you had moved back to Florida and got your house. And I just remember you just being like, so thankful to not have people breaking into cars, you know, outside your door. And I remember Rose, you told us you like, you recorded just the sounds of the street in LA during 2020 and yeah. during the pandemic and stuff. And that's just 
chilling to think about, you know? And so right. I think you're right. You, you don't even, you don't just see things, but you internalize them to, to not be like, Oh, woe is me. But you, you've internalized them to say like, I'm so thankful for what mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. But I also think you made a great point to say that they were happy. They weren't, you mm-hmm. know, sitting there saying like, Oh, I wish we had a refrigerator. You know, they, right. they were making the best of it. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, I look at, my life and I'm like, oh, I moved away from my family. I went to across the country and it's hard, Mm -hmm. you know? And then I look at my wife and like at 25, she decides to move to a different country with like hardly anything and like um, just made it happen and thrived. Yeah. And like, and you know, I'm complaining about having uh, these little anxiety attacks and like, you know, it's like, but seriously, it, it is something like I look up to my wife because of such a boss that she is, you know, and she's, she's amazing. So yeah. yeah. But your journey is different. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not really, I guess I shouldn't compare journeys, yeah. but like, it's so cool how like God put us together. Mm-hmm. Like, cause we are, we come from like, our backgrounds are so different. Mm-hmm. And somehow we met in that kitchen mm-hmm. on the eighth floor mm-hmm. and we got our numbers exchanged and now we are living in a house and have a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, ch- change yeah. has been a big part of your guys' life. I mean, changing yeah. from Rose, from changing countries, right. <laughs> from, yeah. from moving to, to LA to, you know, pursue what you were passionate about. Same right. to you, Aaron. I mean, that's, I that's mean, scary. Florida to LA is no little. No, that's, change. that's not a, a small feat. Yeah. And like what Rose was saying, like everyone's journey looks different. And yeah. so, you know, it can be well, easy to, to look at Rose and be like, man, anything below that is like not legitimate, mm-hmm. but it, it is. I mean, we all experience different things. So Aaron, your story is legitimate we and, and just you. as, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because that's your experience. That's what you've yeah, gone yeah. through. I and mean, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I stepped foot in LAX and I was picked up at my first day in the U.S. And I was brought to Newport Beach, California. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a little different. There are still people when I live in Newport Beach, there are some people ask me like, so is it like still jungle in Vietnam? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> lots of it. Mm-hmm. And lots of bananas. <laughs> and you're like, we tease them because they're like, I'm like, don't you have like TV or something? How have you felt you have been able to navigate that? How do you feel like you have been able to navigate embracing such significant changes in your life um and and even like aaron with what you do as i mean as an editor as a director like with the company you work with now change and adapting like that's a big part of what you do how would you say you guys have navigated and embraced that change in your lives like professionally and personally through your stories it kind of all goes back to deciding on the person that you want to spend your life with. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to spend your life? For, for me, I chose to spend my life, the rest of my whole life, the rest of my life, as long as I live, mm-hmm. with a person that allows me to be myself, mm-hmm. that allows me to be creative. And, you know, you talk about changes that, that go on. When you are with a partner, you're with somebody who is your soulmate, they leave an imprint on you and they impact you in a positive way. Like part of who I am is like, I have to be creative. Mm. I have to have that outlet. Mm. If I don't have that outlet, I am a miserable person. Mm -hmm. Um, And so to have somebody who sees that and understands that and allows me that space, um, you know, it's, it's complete freedom and it, it Mm. really just like benefits our relationship together. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that um, change in, in what we do is like, I've always been someone who loves the narrative style of, of storytelling, the narrative Mm -hmm. filmmaking, which is basically any movie that you see in the movie theater that somebody has written a script and they, 
um, you know, there's actors and things like that. That's 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 my 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 love, and I that's what I the types of things that I want to create. And then I met my wife, who loves documentary films, and I was like, documentary films. I don't, you know, I, I had never really seen very many. And then um, being with her, um, we started actually like creating documentaries together. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that uh, we work really well together. Um, and this is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And so her and I together, we started creating um, films together and a lot of them documentaries. And it's so crazy because, because of that, now we still do documentaries and we still do narrative films, but our narrative films have mm -hmm. informed, are, are, are informed by the doc work yeah. that we do. Yeah. And our doc work is informed by the narrative stuff that I love, you know? So it's like, um, I think we've learned to complement each other and appreciate each other. And, um, you know, not many people can work together. Mm -hmm. It's true. Not many people who are in a relationship can work together. Yeah, and absolutely. for some reason, it just works for us. Yeah. Um, I think because we understand and respect mm -hmm. each other. And, and we have a very strong friendship foundation mm -hmm. that we, we, before we agree to uh, date, which I rejected you for two days. Two days. <laughs> Playing card um, to get. We have always agreed that our friendship would come first, mm. that we would always respect each other and listen to each other and be open mm. with each other as friends. Mm. And I think that is very beneficial for our, our relationship and our marriage, mm -hmm. that we love each other as best friends. Mm. And that we always, um, one of the things that Aaron and I, used to do when we were dating is that we had we challenge each other we challenge each other that we would outserve each other mm. wow. and um and that has been something that was very beautiful and amazing and and we kept doing that for a long time and then we still do it we still do it yeah, yeah. that's beautiful that's cool i love that what are some examples of ways you serve each other i know this is off topic but it's like recognizing what her love language is yeah. and recognizing what it is that i know she finds joy from mm -hmm. and fulfilling that joy mm -hmm. you know whether it's like like for me i'm not a neat and tidy person <laughs> but she loves like order and structure and things and like mm -hmm. for me to recognize that Mm -hmm. and go out of my way to try to do that you know you do that i try <laughs> growth love with, it yeah <laughs> with with change being such a big part of your guys story and things like that and something that I, again i think personally and professionally you both thrive in why do you feel like change and embracing change is so difficult for so many people why is that scary Frankly, you know, why do you feel like that's hard for, for people to embrace change? For me, I'll share it like um, a scary moment for me yeah. to realize that change was hard hmm. was when I, um, so I remember three incidents after I moved to the U.S. that I realized my decision to move away from my family, uh, my friends and left everything behind and being in the U.S. by myself was when I... Um, when I lost my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a long time, I just had this feeling like, like uneasy feeling of, because you know, I'm, I'm here by myself and it can be lonely. And then even though you, you live with a host family, you're still by yourself. Yeah. And um, when I heard that my grandmother passed away and it was a reality hit for me. And in that moment, it was like, it was a moment where I, thought that was very selfish of me to leave everything behind just to pursue what I wanted. Mm. Um, and in that moment, I, I was, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was really screaming in my room and I was like a Hulk moment. I flipped my mattress uh -huh. because I was just in so much pain that I couldn't be there for my family. Mm. 
And then you realize that, you know, your parents are getting older too. And then for a long time, I had this fear of, I'm just going to get the phone, a phone call and that it would be about my mom or about my dad or something would happen that I would not able to go back um, in time. Yeah. And so I had to kind of, so I think for me, what I learned to adapt to change mm -hmm. was to be prepared for change mm -hmm. so that I had to become so flexible that if there's sudden change, I am prepared for it. Mm -hmm. That I had to like draw scenarios ahead of time. If this happened, what can I do? If this happened, what can I do? If I get a phone call, what do I do? So at the time I, um, um, I had to do my, like, I have to budget my spending so that I always have enough money for a plane ticket oh, uh, to go home so that whatever happens. And I think, so that change also taught me to have to budget my life, like at least three, four months ahead of time, mm -hmm. because, because I don't have a family to fly back to right. within a couple of hours right. or four hours. Um, um, so it, like, um, like a, a surprise thing happened to me would cost me thousands of dollars. Mm. Um, and for me, that kind of teach me to adapt and be flexible and be always ready for any change. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe like for um, other people here or people in general, I, I mean, people are very comfortable everywhere they are, regardless of where they're from. You can fall into of like your comfort zone and then you are so afraid of change because you're so comfortable. Yeah. You are so afraid. And and I think for me in the moment of my of my of my pain, I think about I stop and I think about think about why you are here. Mm -hmm. Change can bring pain, right? Change can bring like like it can be so uncomfortable but i always have to ask myself why are you here and at the time i was going back to school for filmmaking and and that was my passion and that's what kind of helped me to give me an answer of the reason that i left everything behind and um and there were times that i was working and i would uh, ride my bike it takes me an hour to ride my bike from the house to school and then an hour from school to work and I was riding my bike and I end work at 11 p.m. And I had to ride the bike from um, work back to the house and it would take about 45 minutes. So every day it would be like, I get home at almost midnight and then I wake up at six to ride my bike again to wow. school. And I would have to schedule my classes before, like an hour before work time so that I can ride my bike to to school, yeah. uh, to, uh, to work. And one time I was riding my bike back home in the middle of the night and it was like it went near it was near the beach beach road so there was no light and I and I hear these like um like a car driving by really fast and then I heard laughter and then before I looked up I was soaked in soda oh. so they had thrown their soda cup at me oh. and I just so mad and I was so lonely and I was just so like angry yeah. at myself at the situation and then I had again remind myself why are you here it's so easy to go back it's so easy to just go home and just end everything and just be comfortable again be close to your family and be in your apartment and easy to get a job easy to be back in that comfortable life, but why are you here? Mm. And then I remember that I'm pursuing something that my heart really, really wants. And that, and then it kept me going. Wow. And so I think, I think you have to like really focus on what you want, like your heart desires, and it has to be stronger than the, <sighs> the discomfort yeah. of change for you to pursue it. Yeah.
how do you as a filmmaker balance staying true to your authentic self, yeah. but then also envision, you know, because you go in with a plan, of course, like you're not stupid. But um, how do you how do you balance that with just the, the flexibility that you have to have yeah. on set That's and, and just in filmmaking in general? I think what it is like after I've been I've been a filmmaker for 15 years now. I, th I think what it is, is, is really a lot of it's like being comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. and knowing that that change will happen and things will mess up. Things will not go according to plan. I mean, we, we know this, we, we, um, you know, in our faith journey, we, we think that like our lives are going to go this way and then it totally shifts. Mm -hmm. Like we're experiencing that right now. Yeah. We're experiencing that right now. And like, um, you know, I, I think, I think w like with a set mentality, it's like keeping your cool and, and embracing, like not running from the change or running from conflict, mm -hmm. but embracing it and seeing like, how is this, how can we use this? You know, Justin, you and I were on set. How many times were there like people in the background or a train going or yeah. whatever? And I'm like, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Let's let, let's let it happen. Now I'm using a train in the background mm -hmm. as like a, a audio motif for a character yeah. in the wow. film, you know? And so yeah. it's like- And that ended up being a big piece of, of the film and just like a, a really beautiful moment, a wow. really beautiful moment. Cause yeah. you embraced it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, think, I think that's what it is. Um, I mean, I say that, and then I'm going to be in another situation where I'm like, ah! yeah, <laughs> I'm, like I'm not going to be thinking about embracing, but right. yeah. maybe like 30 minutes afterwards, I'll be thinking about maybe I should right. embrace this. Well, uh, kind of along those lines, I mean, the example that you just gave with the train from, from your feature, Shepard, um, mm -hmm. again, so excited for you guys. I, I just saw the latest cut a few days ago. It's looking amazing. Um, again, so excited for that, but like that went through a process that went through a process of change. I mean, you and I know, like the, we say there's three, three films that you make, the one you write, the one you shoot and the one you edit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, there's, there's pros and cons to that, but that's all part of kind of embracing that change as an artist. Can you talk about how with Shepard being the director on it, being the writer on it, you know, uh, obviously working very yeah. closely with, with Julian Gant, who was amazing uh, on the project, but um, being the editor as well. Mm -hmm. And that kind of went through some metamorphosis, some change. Yeah. Can, can you talk through that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, starting off, this is a, this has been an eight year journey. Uh, it's been a dream of mine to make for eight years. And, um, you know, it's always, we talk about like, the need to create. Mm -hmm. um, it's been just this nagging voice in the back of my head for eight years. Mm -hmm. And I would always bring it up. I'm always thinking about it. I always bring it up to Rose and I'm like, you know, we could, um, you know, make this film. And, you know, we were talking about it for a long time, mm -hmm. making it in LA. And then in 2020, we decided to move to Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and um, because we had a child and the COVID happened and we wanted to be closer to our family. So we moved right. to Florida, which is where we live now. We love it. Mm -hmm. um, and I turned to, one day I just turned to Rose and I was like, um, you know, if we make this film and and then like I looked at her and, and she was open to it. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, if we make the film, we could do this. We could do that, you know, and this is how much it would cost. And I was like, I think we could make the film. And she's like, I think we could make the film. And I was like, wow. really? We could do it? You know, it was like, and when we said it out loud, mm -hmm. that's when people started to jump on board. It's so weird yeah, like how that works. But like when we actually started moving on making the film and we decided we were going to do it ourselves and we weren't going to ask for help from anybody um, financially, mm -hmm. we just decided we were like, we're going to do it. All of a sudden people started jumping in with support. I met, we met you guys yeah. oh, like yeah. shortly yeah. after that. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, so, so the film had been written for almost six years wow. and then it was just sitting there and 
when we actually got into production, you know, it's it's funny because a lot of creatives in the film, you know, in filmmaking, you know, especially if you're the person in charge, you yeah. kind of want to like puff your chest out. You kind of just want to be like, I got, I, I got it all in control. I have every answer. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say. I know exactly where I'm going to put people. I know where I'm going to put the camera. <laughs> but it's like, you know, something that I went into production phase, this being my first feature that I was directing, I did not want to come in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to come in with a humble heart and with humility. And um, I was very upfront with everybody and honest with everybody. I was like, hey, um, I'm not very strong in, in some of these areas of filmmaking. And, and I was very, especially with my actors, especially with Julian, who's also the producer of the film, I was like, hey man, I'm really insecure about this scene. Uh, there was a particular scene that we filmed, which I would yep. consider probably the hardest scene that we shot. Yeah. Um, which I did it. We did it early on because I wanted to get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I, I approached Julian and um, Asia Ray Coleman, who also um, yep. is amazing. Yeah, um, Asia Ray did great. I, I sat with them and I was like, hey guys, um, I'm a little unsure about this. And, you know, instead of coming at it and being like, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow you know, be ready. And like, I stay up all night, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I'm so worried. Right. I sat with them and I was like, look, I'm not sure about this. And I really need you guys help. Right. And they sat with me for, I think an hour and a half, two hours that night. Oh. Um, it was after a shooting day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they stayed with me and we, we worked out that scene. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, as, as much as, you do as a filmmaker and especially an independent filmmaker you you are doing everything yeah but even though you're doing everything it is film is still a collaborative art Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and if i didn't approach them and 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 share my insecurities and share my weaknesses that scene would not have been near as good as it turned out to be yeah i com completely agree completely agree yeah. i think because you had that Servant spirit leadership. and 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 that you were willing to be like accept and adapt with change and again change is not always a negative thing change can be saying hey this is this is what i envision it as i'm okay to change this to make it better mm -hmm. like right. you're a, you're a servant of that story as the director you're you're the protector and the servant of that story especially if you have written that story or you're involved in the writing process mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you want to preserve that you want to preserve yeah. what it is. And so you have to be the gatekeeper of, yes, I'm open to change, but I'm open to change that has purpose yeah. and that's going to serve. Right. And that, yeah. and I think you did a really good job of that with, yeah. with Shepard. Which is Thanks, where that man. documentary style like exactly. really serves you well mm -hmm. because you are mm -hmm. being adaptable and you're not coming and saying, oh, there's a skylight, you know, flag it. Let's get rid yeah, of that. Exactly. You know, like you were able to adapt or, oh, there's a train. Stop. Yeah, Stop yeah, rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Cut. yeah. So yeah. I think that that's a, that what you said earlier about blending the two genres is just yeah. really served you well. And Rose was, I will say, Rose, you were fantastic through that whole process of mm -hmm. uh, like keeping everything on schedule and keeping the, the wheels turning behind the scenes as well so that Aaron could focus yeah. on the it's scene huge. itself. Yeah. Um, and so like all the other million things that are going on behind the scenes as a producer, I thought you and you and Larnell like knocked it out of the park on that. You guys both did Thank an you. amazing yeah. job. If I, if I also may say, um, Justin, you were such a godsend yes, because absolutely. we had like, what did you say? Ju September 17th, 2021 is when we st yeah. first started hanging Our out. First yeah. Thing, yeah. yeah. We shot the film like five, six months later or something. That's right, man. And it, was, and it was right before we April. moved to Atlanta. So we yes. postponed our postponed our move for Shepard. Like yep. we, we had a newborn at home. We had a three month old. Well, we did it more so, so for Brennan, but no. But we had a house here. We owned this house, yeah. and we were yeah. like, "Nope, Shepard." And yeah. I'm so glad we did. Like I'm so yeah, glad no, because it was when awesome. for those of you who are not married to a creative or not creative <laughs> yourselves, like let me explain to you. It's the worst. What it's like. <laughs> 
to see them work, you know, like you said, editing or something by themselves. They work 10 hours. They're like beat. Like Justin will go to bed just tired. He will go and work a 16, 18 hour day on set and come back. Oh, 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 that was amazing. Let's go again. Like, uh, within a specific role. Yes. <laughs> like, and, and I mean, and this was even even more special because he'd come back and tell me these just God stories yeah, of yeah, this yeah. person just had like this amazing ability to do this. And yeah. so I feel like it Shepard was, a, was, was just cool next team. level, but I just, I mean, and he was, our baby wasn't sleeping through the night yet. So like he was so jazzed to be there and I'm so glad yeah, we was, did it. It was a cool project. Mm -hmm. the, the film, the, I, I think it needs to be said that the film would not be what it turned out to be without you, Justin, yes. because like of the sacrifices that you made in a yeah. bad way. I, well, I just tanked it. And Stephanie for, for being the, the support and yeah. everything. Yes. Yeah. Because, absolutely. because honestly, like it wasn't just that you ended up taking over yeah. and, and being the DP, you also came to set every day with this amazing attitude that inspired me. So you had amazing. ideas. Mm -hmm. And even when I felt mm -hmm. like, just defeated like there were days yeah. where i was just done yeah. i was like i don't why am i doing this like yeah. why did i decide to do this yeah. i don't want to be here anymore yeah. justin was like what do you think about this <laughs> and it's like you know what i just i just think it needs to be said man like you oh, were man. just a godsend so shucks Thanks, guys. No, it was it was a really cool project. And again, I'm 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 excited about where that's going. I'm excited, obviously, about, you know, where you guys are going with that. Yeah. What are you guys excited about for the future? I mean, like more change, honestly, probably <laughs> yeah. changes you don't even know about that are coming. Like, yeah, I you know, we spent six months in Vietnam and Rose and I are always looking to create. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we I mean, we're working on. Multiple docs right now like we're in the middle of you know <laughs> multiple docs rose is directing one nice which i pushed her to do so and i'm very excited that she's going to do that oh um, that's super it's about, exciting it's about a very famous um vietnamese um singer mm -hmm. and just kind of like behind the scenes of like what life is like for her and like the struggle and everything and um and it's gonna be amazing um oh i'm sure yeah, so we're we're doing that, and then you know, I guess we're kind of waiting to see how Shepard does, yep. mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, there are um, actually there's there's like four scripts that I'm like ready to move forward with. Oh yeah. Um, but we want to move forward with money <laughs> and like the proper financing and like yes. the, you know, support, um, you know, as, as fun as Shepard was, to do, <laughs> I do not want to have to go through that again of, yeah. of yeah. you know, just S specifically how, how much you did with a very small amount of right. things. Yeah. And, yeah. and so just so people know, like part of the hard part within filmmaking is the sustainability factor. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, just because you can doesn't mean it's like good for you. Like even just yeah. your health wise yeah. and yeah. you know, there, there's a lot of pieces um, yeah. to do it sustainably. And you're, so you're absolutely right, Aaron. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, our last question that we always ask is what does it mean for you to intentionally thrive in your life? Mm -hmm. I think it's in that in that word intentional mm -hmm. yeah. because there I feel like there is no thriving if there is no intentionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because if not, you're just kind of floating through life. You're just kind of existing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's easy to, to, to do that because, mm -hmm. you know, you can you can just kind of like be in this comfortability wherever you're at in life you can just kind of like float in that mm -hmm. but if you're being intentional and you're actively like thinking about your future and your steps yeah. and who you want to do it with yeah mm -hmm. um you know i care about really i care about two people in my life mm -hmm. care about i should say i care about what two people think about me mm -hmm. and that's my wife and my daughter. Mm -hmm. Those are the two people that I care about, like what they think about me. Yeah. Wow. We are parents now. And we actually today we talk about Sophie's progress of like, she's growing up 
to be such a good kid. Mm -hmm. And, and to me, I see that and I see the, the work that we put into choosing every day to spend time with her, yeah. to be with her, to read with her, to praise her when she does good and be, and as tough as it is, you have to discipline her when she does something not good sure. yeah. um, right. because she's four, you know, and she should know better. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so like, I think that is the reminder for, for me and for Aaron to like, to work on ourselves, to thrive in different aspects as, as a parent, as mm. for me as a wife and how I treat my husband, even when I, we treat our, our dog, she watches every single movement that we do, right? And, and what we say. And so she is the reminder for us to, to be better, to thrive as a person and like yeah. the things that we do and how we grow as a as a family mm -hmm. um and that's that's kind of like the constant reminder for me these days anyways mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's really what it is about like you guys are yeah. parents we're parents yeah it's all about the next generation yep mm -hmm. it's all about like what are your what is the world mm -hmm. that your kids are growing up in right sure. and if and if if my daughter, our, our daughter, mm -hmm. exists in a world where her parents are like really trying to um, do good. Yep. Mm -hmm. And who are trying to, um, you know, not just like materialistically make a film so that yeah. we could say we made a film. Yeah, it's like, sure. Sophie can say, my, my parents like are intentional. Mm -hmm. My parents. Um, have a passion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's so important. Yeah, it's so important. That's awesome. I love that.